You are listening to The Reference Desk, the Wicomico Library's podcast that connects you to your public library. Welcome back to The Reference Desk, your connection with a local library. My name is Vicki and I am here with Miss Amy again. Hello! <laughs> for our December podcast. This year we're going to call it a year in review. So this month marks the end of 2021. It's been a wild ride, for sure. You may still be scrambling to get those last minute gifts for friends and family, and of course, as librarians, we agree that you can never go wrong with a book. Today, we'll be going over some of the acclaimed publications that have come out this year, ranging from children's, teens, graphic novels, and adults, and we'll include various genres in case, you know, you have different tastes than we do. If you've already finished your holiday shopping, great job you, all these books are available either through the library or on our digital resources. We'll start with the kids' books. For the littles, uh, we picked the picture book, uh, The Wonderful Things You Will Be, by Emily Winfield Martin. This beautifully illustrated book uses rhythms and rhymes to express all the loving things that parents and caretakers feel towards their children. Getting up to the independent readers, Dave Pilkey's Cat Kid Comic Club came out this year, and it is such a fun graphic novel. It's silly and clever, as Pilkey, the author of Dogman, he's known for that. His titles are all extremely clever and pithy, and I, I, I'm here for it. Um, the fun fact about this series, The Cat Kid Comic Club, is that it's actually a spin-off of Dogman. Cat Kid is featured in a few of his more recent books for the Canine Cup, and now he's got his own comic. So far, there's only two Cat Kid books written, but there are bound to be more. Our chapter book picks for the kids includes A Long Walk to Water by Linda Sue Park. Uh, this book tells the true story of two Sudanese children who face many obstacles in an effort to improve not only their own lives, but the lives of others. Another chapter book we recommend is actually a whole series. Uh, between 2020 and 2021, author Rick Riordan has teamed up with other authors from many different backgrounds to bring the Rick Riordan Presents a series of books. If you're at all a fan of Camp Half-Blood, The Red Pyramid, Thor's Hammer, or any other book based loosely on mythology from around the world, you'll love learning about other less well-known cultures as well. Riordan teams up with authors who have a deep cultural connection with Central American, Native American, African, and Korean histories, and, and others as well. And these writers bring to life their own rich culture in the same way that Percy Jackson brought the Olympians to life years ago. It, yeah, it's a great series. I've been really enjoying it. Um, the last one I read was the Tristan Strong one, mm -hmm. but I'm really looking forward to the new Daughter. Daughter of the Deep? Yeah. That's actually out now. So uh, That's actually based off Jules Verne's 20,000 20, Leagues Under the Sea, actually, and I was going to mention that. So, and these uh, are later. great for adults, too. Like oh, I said, yeah. I've been really enjoying this series. No shame. We, we, uh, I've read them all as an adult, and they're still enjoyable. And if you have somewhat of an obsession, one could say, with world mythology, as I do, uh, these are really interesting ways to get a look at the mythology in a less intimidating light, because it's explained in a little more of an, a, a relatable way. And I think that's a great key, that it is relatable, but it's also something that's kind of not on the well-known beaten trap path you know it's mm -hmm. like these are a lot of cultures mythologies that we don't normally get access to mm -hmm. or have seen at in least movies in the US and TVs. yeah so it's it's nice to re kind of like rediscover a whole new pantheons and mm -hmm. interesting myths and stories yeah something that I know we don't get a lot of in the Western culture the Western you know Western Hemisphere is these uh, Korean and Japanese and Indian cultures uh, Arusha is one of the series and she focuses on the Hindu gods um, and then you've got the Jake what is it, the pearl Dragon Pearl, mm -hmm. and that's Korean. Mm -hmm. um, and you got some Aztec, that there's an Aztec version or uh, series, and just cultures that we normally wouldn't experience in our mainstream education. You, everyone learns in some fashion about the Greek and Roman gods, sometimes the Norse, if you get yeah. really into it. Because the Thor thing going the on. Thor Everybody knows, everyone the Thor knows Thor. Thor. <clears throat> um, but you know, you, you don't get a whole lot of introduction to the more. I wouldn't say obscure, because they're not obscure to the countries they're, you know, home to. Uh, but in the Western world, we tend to focus on the ones that have more of an impact on our language. And Roman, Greek, and Norse, because at one point, Rome and Norway had control over England. A lot of our words stem from that. In fact, Wednesday is a tribute to Woden or Odin in Norse mythology. So there's a very deep tie, and I think that's why our culture is more focused on those, but it's really great to realize that that's not all there is. 
And also, I think that those are the ones that we grew up with, so we're familiar mm-hmm. with. So they constantly do the same retread of the mm-hmm. same myths and same stories. You know, it's like, oh, we'll just remake this one over again. And no one really tries anything new that we haven't already done before. So it's it's a great series. We recommend mm-hmm. it. Absolutely. And Daughter of the Deep as well has come out. That's actually a Rick Riordan uh, book, not, not a uh, Presents. So it's actually written by the OG himself. And... Um, it's a loose retelling, modern retelling of 20,000 League Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Also a good book. Um, it is a product of its time. Keep that in mind when you read it. But it is still a very well done book. And Jules Verne was, he was crazy, but he was great. Um, and also in our description, we will put a link to the Hoopla uh, link. Because Hoopla has pretty much every single Rick Riordan book. Um, that you can think of. If not an e-book, then audio book. If not e-book. great to listen to of those in me car rides to mm-hmm. the family this holiday. Absolutely, and it's one of those things you can let the kids listen to with you, and you don't have to, like, oh, skip that chapter. <laughs> yeah, because that's been a thing. Um, but, yeah, you definitely can uh, check those out. We'll make it easier to find because there's so many of them. Just we'll go ahead, and, and they're all different authors, so you can't just look up by Rick Riordan. Sometimes you have to look it up by, mm-hmm. like, Grace Kim or whatever the author, Cervantes, whoever the author is for those books. Um, and now we'll move on to teens, because we kind of went off the rails there, but that's kind of par for the course, right? Moving on to teens and young adult, uh, I'm going to pick two novels, and we'll do two graphic novel series that you may want, or your teen, to check out. Um, if you want to check out YA, YA is still for you if you're an adult, because adult is in the title. It's just more of a, it, it's just that it's, it's not as much, the defining, um, aspect of young adult versus adult fiction is that young adult fiction tends not to have as much graphic detail in it. Um, there still can be trigger warnings, there still can be assault of various natures, but it's not going to be as explicit, and you may not have someone describing entrails, you know? Yeah. But really, it boils down to a coming-of-age story, so mm-hmm. it's not about, you know, becoming an adult, which... Let's face it, even when you're 40-something years old, you're Sometimes. still learning about adulting. So yeah. it, it can still resonate with you. It <laughs> absolutely can. Everyone goes through periods of growth, no matter how old you are, and you can still extrapolate from that. And so YA can still be extremely entertaining. And some of the stories that they tell are fantastic and relatable and still applicable to anyone's life. So anyway, teens and young adults, let's go. The first novel (laughs) that comes with a bit of a trigger warning for teens and some adults, um, there is substance abuse mentioned in here. So if that is something that is going to cause any kind of problems, just, you know, you may want to avoid this particular book or be aware of it ahead of time. Um, The Firekeeper's Daughter, it is a thriller novel, um, and it's about an Ojibwe teen who longs to leave her hometown on the reservation, and she wants to start fresh in college. Her dreams are put on hold as family tragedy strikes, and she stays to help her family through it. The main character, named Duanis, becomes embroiled in an FBI investigation, and it culminates in a finale full of betrayal and tough decisions. Um, Again, trigger warning, there is drug abuse, substance abuse involved in that, so just be aware. If uh, thrillers and murder and mayhem and drug abuse are not your thing, uh, I do recommend The Twisted Fairy Tale. Uh, A Twisted Fairy Tale is a trope that's been going on for a while now, but uh, Disney, of all people, (laughs) surprised, uh, has put out this Twisted Fairy Tale series, um, and there's like 12 books so far, and in each series, they're written in a what-if scenario. Um, for example, what if Anna and Elsa didn't know each other? Or what if Rapunzel's mother drank a potion from the wrong flower? Um, and I'm in an effort to investigate and re, uh, you know, make myself familiar with this series, I started reading the Anna and Elsa one, which is called Conceal, Don't Feel, and it's interesting. It's an interesting concept uh, like basically Anna was separated from Elsa instead of like just wiping her memories Anna is sent to live with a baker in town on the mountain and they still like all the same people are still there like even Wesselton or Wieselton or however you pronounce this name mm-hmm. in, in the movie Frozen uh, he's in that and I'm like okay but it, I haven't gotten so far that they've met yet but they're real close like coronation's happening um, everything else is the same, but it's just that one thing happens and, and it's exploring how this story will be different and how the character arcs should be different. I love a twisted fairy tale. That's just me. But this whole series is all Disney movies. <laughs> and what would happen if? Insert prompt premise here. I mean, it works for Marvel. It, it, just, it, it keeps it that fodder going. You know, mm-hmm. you can be so creative and do and explore different themes and stories oh, within yeah. the same world that you feel comfortable trying. It's kind of like sanctioned fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Basically. And we all know how big that is. Fan fiction is a thing, man. 
<laughs> it saved the publishing world there for it, a while. It literally is what keeps Kindle <clears throat> Unlimited going. Yes. So anyway, uh, they allow you to more easily immerse yourself in the story, and uh, you can more clearly describe, and it, it also has the option of more clearly describing the people and places that are involved because they're not limited by what was in the movie. So that's kind of cool. And um, I just think it's a really fun uh, read. You can get all those books. Every single one's available on Hoopla. And we also have the series within the library as well. If you want that paperback, you know, physical book. Go that's, for it. Go for it. You do you. Um, you're not going to the beach in December, so I guess, you know, maybe sitting at home you can read a regular book. On the couch. On you the know, couch. On a blanket with some cocoa. Maybe the cat sitting on you if that's, you know, something. Keeps you warm. Yes. Um, yeah, so we're going to move on now to, uh, from our teen f non YA fiction books to the graphic novels. Graphic novels are a fantastic literary device. People always look down on graphic novels as like juvenile or not really reading, but like statistically speaking, graphic novels have more new words per page than regular books. Yes. And because you have pictures to go along with it, especially young readers or emerging readers or readers who are not quite as let's just say, experienced or don't have the vocabulary because of whatever reason, uh, between kids and teens alike, graphic novels have the pictures and you can do context, context clues way better. Yeah, I like graphic novels because some people are more visual learners versus, you know, the written word learners. Mm -hmm. learners. So you have the best of both worlds. You have that visual element that can draw you in and still tell a story without words. But then, you know, you can you have to be concise with your words when you're using a graphic novel. Mm -hmm. So every word counts. Exactly. And you have a lot of space either or else you get in the way of the picture. Mm -hmm. um, Marvel Comics have been putting out tons of new content because of the What If and the Shang-Chi and, and Multiverse, all, multiverse mm -hmm. and everything. Spider-Man even. That's um, my, my really? recommended. Yeah. So the new one that I recommend is Milo Morales, The Shockwaves. So this one, again... It's still Spider-Man's, but it's it's a different character of Spider-Man. That's the multiverse uh, Spider-Man movie, right? Um, they did a they did a animated movie mm -hmm. that was really big. Yeah, um, I, I actually highly recommend that one too. But um, Miles in this one, he is it's more dealing with his mother's Puerto Rican background, mm -hmm. so it's like got a really nice new take. And I like these because both of my recommendations actually are in popular worlds but a slightly different kind of twist on it so the miles really fits the bill and he's an awesome character so it de all deals with a charity and with the earthquakes it, um where it strikes puerto rico mm -hmm. so it's like a new place it's not just a new york city kind of thing so i highly recommend that one nice many buildings to swing from when you're in puerto rico though <laughs> he you know he can turn invisible so it's fine oh he can that's yes. a new one so um <laughs> i didn't so, know the spider gave him that ability did you need to watch the movie i do need to watch the it's movie. a great intro so um i also highly recommend it's the third the third book came out this year and it's the raven and beast boy series by kami oh my gosh i'm sorry by kami garcia that's right and gabrielle piccolo piccolo so this one i'm pretty sure it's that great where you either remember the teen titan cartoon the original or the teen titans go which has like this kind of like I hate, love, That's where base. I was introduced to the Teen Titans, with so Teen Titans Go. they're familiar characters, but these are more, um, it's, it's a teen version, but they really have, what I really like what this author and this team is doing with this series is that these are, they're slightly different than, I guess, the, though with comic books, there's so many different sort of, like, intro, like, character creation um, mythos, but this one takes it back down to a more, like, realistic teen level. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, they're superpowers, and yes, they're supernatural elements, but it boils down to common teen themes and common teen experiences, so you can really relate to the characters, mm -hmm. even though they have superpowers and scary father figures. I'll be honest, so, I glanced through and realized the scary father figures. I'm like, what? Yeah. Cause Somebody's got it, daddy's issues. Right, no, no, I noticed that. <laughs> I was, when you checked it out, I kind of thumbed through it because I was bored and I was nosy. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I wonder. And I looked and it was really, really sweet. Like, it yeah. was just so cute. And their relationship is just like, mwah. 
Yeah, so okay. Cute. So this is that whole shipper thing, which if you're in any kind of fan world, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you're you know, a fan fiction. People, people will fight wars over this, so mm-hmm. one day this will be like the new, you know, Cold War. It's oh, yeah. like, who, who, you know, who wants this person, this couple to be in a relationship versus oh. this couple? Oh, my sister is diehard. <laughs> Jane does not deserve Bingley. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, she is like, I love the books where Jane does get not get Bingley because he is so weak. Yes. So, yeah, mm, okay, that, I mean, that's, we can't that's a completely different that. podcast, guys. We can do that, but maybe that's that should be another podcast. That's a different podcast. But, um, so these are ones that I highly recommended. They're common characters that pretty much any kid would be familiar with, um, an adult. And, like I said, it's a nice new series. It, it really has an emotional depth that I, I prefer. And the illustrations are fantastic. Yes. Yeah, the illustrations are really good. It's not a big comic book. It's not a thick one or a tall one. It's one you could stick in a bag or your purse or something like that and take with you, and you wouldn't have to. Portability is like a 10 out of 10. Yes. And, it, you know, American comic books versus manga, which I'll do next if you don't mind. Sure. <laughs> Can I go one more comic book? Oh, okay. Uh, one comic book that I wanted to put in there. Um so this past October, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, Dune, uh, which has been in the works since like ni- 2000, uh, 2019, got put on halt for you know the whole like elephant in the room pandemic, um, and then re-release or re you know rework refinished remastered whatever you want to call it. It's based on a novel by Frank L. Herbert, and the novel's been on the dry side and can be a bit to ma- plow through. And yes, I totally meant to make that pun. If you know, you know. Um, Luckily, (laughs) there is a graphic novel that is based on the story that's available on Hoopla that you can enjoy. Um, It's a little easier to digest. Let's go with that. Again, it comes down to you have pictures. And so much of Herbert's book is describing the landscape. And it's not that exciting because it's it's sand and occasional bizarre creatures. Um, So the, the graphic novel is a really great way to get an idea and a feel for the story. Because the best part of that story is the political intrigue and the storyline, the growth of Paul Atreides after his father is killed, and the fulfillment of this prophecy that he is, you know, the, the kid, he's a teen. In every teen book, the kid's got some kind of prophecy they're fulfilling. They're the chosen one, because no one's normal, um, at least not in, <laughs> not in teen graphic novels anyway. Um, and it, it's, it's by turns an ecological warning, because uh, he also put that in there in a very subtle way. Um, and it's also an immersive political intrigue. And it can be really, really fun read. Um, it's got a great story. It's just, reading the book can be a bit of a slog. So I do recommend the graphic novel in conjunction with, or instead of <laughs> reading the book. It's gonna take you a lot less time because it's a beefy boy if you get the book book. So yeah, graphic novel for that is fantastic. The illustrations are great too. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take over with the manga. Yes, please do. So, <laughs> manga is also great. So, manga is originally was the Japanese comic book. So, very similar elements to American comic books. Um, and the big three for this year for manga has been My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, which have already been popular. So, these are long series. They're all long series, to be honest. But they've been doing anime for My Hero Academia, mm-hmm. right? It's it's it, it, like I said, these are already pretty popular, mm-hmm. and they're still going strong. And then a relatively newer one is Jujutsu Kaisen. So um, these are shonen series. So what that means is that they tend towards more boy stories. They're targeted to a boy audience. Because there's a lot of mangas geared toward the female audience. There, that's the shoujo. So, like, the more relationship you, you know, I, can I get him as my, you know, boyfriend kind of thing. <laughs> or, you know, I live with 12 Zodiac boys and I'm the only girl in the house. Yes. That's, well, Brubess, because it's huge. So, that's a good <laughs> one. But for this year, these have been the um, super popular ones. So, if you have someone in, in your life to give us a gift, or if you want to jump into them, these are, again, very popular with all ages because they have a visual element but they also have a really intense storyline at the same time um now my hero academia and demon slayer tend to well i guess would be like a teenager audience um but jujitsu kaisen gets really deep and dark so i'm 16 and older probably would be my advice um it's so popular though some of the graphic novels are hard to get to so to get online, we, we we've been having trouble getting them at the library, yeah, just been, ordering them. Yeah, we've been having back order for a while now. They're yeah. hugely popular. Mm-hmm. So you probably have someone who mentions those in your life. You can get merchandise <laughs> or the comic book if you can 
Park manga. If you can grab a hold of it, those would make great gifts as well. And if you are interested in them, then, you know, check them out at your library. You don't have to be a kid to enjoy them. Although you need to be over 16 if you really want to not get scarred for life from... I, I do I do recommend it. I mean, little kids know, you know, graphic novels, but they you should make sure you skew towards the level you're comfortable with your child. Also make sure reading. they know that to read from the what we would call the back. Because my seven year old when he first picked up manga he was so confused. Well you <laughs> he know said, why is it back do you know when they first introduced manga, they actually tried to flip everything to do left to right mm-hmm. like us and we're like, you know what, real fans they're, they're, they they know to read right to left, so yeah. let's just go back to front. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. It takes a lot less time to get them produced and printed without if they can just flip superimpose on top of the pictures instead of moving all the pictures. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's just really funny when you don't tell your child and then you watch them try to it, read it. If you're reading it and uh, they're answering questions before they're asked, you're reading it the wrong He's way. He's psychic. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, manga's a really really interesting um, medium. So because. It is written by a culture we are not as familiar mm-hmm. with. But again, they're dealing with those same issues mm-hmm. that, that are relevant to young adults. Like, you have that ordinary boy. It not It's not always a prophecy, but it's still something happens and they become something else. And then they have to deal with it. Which I love because they're very big on that school. Um, it's like no matter what, whether you have superpowers or you get demon powers, you're so going those- to school again, just a special <laughs> supernatural school. Yeah, because no matter what, even if you have to save the world, even if you can fly, you still have to go to school and pass those exams. So mm, that's a common theme there. And even Ruby had to go to a oh, special school. Oh, yeah. No, you, it, you, 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 do, you never leave that school element because that is everyone's familiar with having to go to school. Yeah, it's something that they can relate to. And I mean, even we, we do too, but not quite as hardcore, like almost religiously, they are encouraged to go to school and be yes. as good as they can. And so that's something they relate to a lot better, which they, is why it's in everything. There, it is inevitable. You can't get out of it no matter what. If you're saving the world, still got to go do your homework. <sighs> still got to take that test. Sorry. Yep. So we're going to move on to adult fiction now. Um, it, lots of stuff has been released this year. It's been diverse and prolific. Patterson, of course, has released a bunch under his name and his underwriters. Stuart Woods, he's been rather prolific as well. Danielle Stan- Steele, if you're more into the thriller slash romance, she's done quite a bit. Nora Roberts has been busy. Um, but we're going to do a couple highlights here today of other authors that aren't quite as, let's just say, popular. Well-known. Well-known. Let's go with well-known. That's a bit better. Um, in, in case thrillers aren't your jam, all these titles that we're discussing today are going to be available on Hoopla for you to download as well. Uh, so to start, we're recommending A King of Battle and Blood. Don't judge this book by its cover. It looks, and the artwork looks like a YA series book of, like, you know, Katniss Everdeen. But um, this is a very adult story. <laughs> it's 16 up. Uh, it's it's the first in a series, uh, the Adrian and Isolde series. Uh, the, the author, Scarlett St. Clair, she also wrote the Hades and Persephone series. So dark fantasy is something she is good at and used to. Uh, their union, I'm going to read from the uh, description for you, uh, just to give you an idea of what it's about. Their union is his revenge. Isolde de Lara considers her wedding day to be her death day. To the end, to end a year-long war, she is to marry the vampire king Adrian Alexander Vasiliev and kill him. But her assassination attempt is thwarted, and Adrian threatens that if Isolde tries to kill him again, he will raise her as the undead. Faced with the possibility of becoming the thing she hates the most, Isolde seeks out other ways to defy him and survive the brutal vampire court. Except it isn't the court she fears most, it's Adrian. Despite their undeniable chemistry, she wonders why the king, fierce, savage, and merciless, chose her as consort. The answer will shatter her world. This whole book is the quintessential enemies to lovers story. Uh, You throw in some vampires and some assassination and some chemistry, and this is gearing up to be an adventure pack story to keep you warm on a cold night. The next fiction book we're going to cover is a bit more realistic. You may recall a book called Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens that was released the fall before the shutdown. This was super popular. It was super huge. A whole a super hit. It was, and it was such an unknown author. Like, she just came out of nowhere. It, I read it. It's fantastic. I do recommend that. But this one's about a different book. So this, um, this book is called The Girls in the Stilt House by Kelly Mustaine, and it's set in 1920s Mississippi. It weaves a beautiful and harrowing story of two teenage girls cast in an unlikely partnership through murder. Ada promised herself that she would never go back to the Trace, to her hard life on the swamp and her harsh father. 
But now, after running away to Baton Rouge and briefly knowing a different kind of life, she finds herself with nowhere to go but back home, and she knows there will be a price to pay with her father. Matilda, the daughter of a sharecropper, is from the other side of the trace. Doing what she can to protect her family from the whims and demands of some particularly callous locals is an ongoing struggle. She forms a plan to go north, to pack up the secrets she's holding about her life in the south and hang them on the line for all to see in Ohio. As the two girls are drawn deeper into a dangerous world of bootleggers and moral corruption, they must come to terms with the complexities of their tenuous bond and a hidden past that links them in ways that could cost them their lives. That's all we have for recommendations this month. Um, feel free to explore more books on Hoopla and in our library system uh, to find a really good read that you know can be your new favorite. Uh, this year has been so full of change and so many things have happened both good and bad for everybody. Still so much uncertainty. Oh yes, um, and for many, um, reading has provided an escape and a means for connection. Not only can you get away from the struggle of everyday life, you can also connect with other people because you're reading the same book someone else is and you both have experienced the same story even though through different eyes, but you've still experienced, you almost like you know the same people because you've met these characters and you've developed a camaraderie with them. The titles featured today are just a fraction of the new releases this year. And uh, we do hope you go both online and uh, to the, our, our library as well to find your next new read. Yeah, we have Hoopla, which we've mentioned a couple of times. Oh, we all the time. We have Overdrive. <laughs> we do. So we have two different ways you can get your instant ebooks for your digital um, escapism and or mm -hmm. just reaffirming life. Um, and of course, we are, our doors are open, so if you prefer your physical book, we are here and ready to help you get it as soon as possible. Absolutely, because if, if you're not super comfortable using our website, you are always welcome to come to the library and ask a librarian. Anyone who works there will be happy to find the book for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then until next time, until we see hear you hear us again, uh, happy reading and have a great day. So this is Amy and Vicki signing off. Future episodes may feature a variety of topics, ranging from storytelling, arts and crafts, reader's advisory, reference questions, discussion, and more. We also encourage feedback through our Facebook page or in the comments section on the podcast. Visit us online at www.wicomicolibraries.org. Search for Wicomical Libraries on your favorite podcasting site. You can call us at 410-546-5397 or you can email us at center at wacomico.org. That is C E 